Yeah. Yes, Jen. You ready? Yes. Okay then. Um, so uh, welcome, Rabia, to advise the live stream. Yes. Okay. I can confirm that we're on live stream now. So if I can just go through the protocol yeah. to introduce the meeting. I just like sorry. I thought I'd open the meeting. Welcome everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, welcome everybody to CPIC. If I can ask Rabia now to, we confirm we're live streaming and Rabia will now go through the protocol. Okay. That's right. um, if I can just go through the protocol, please only speak when invited to by the chair. If you wish to speak, please raise your hands and direct all communications via the chair. Please ensure that your mics are muted when you are not speaking. If you're referring to a specific page or a picture in a report, please refer to the page number. If you're having any technical difficulties, use the chat function in Google to load the meeting, or you can dial in with the meeting um, details. Please do not use the chat function for putting formal questions to the committee or to make other comments. Any persistent disruption, disruptive behaviour will result in removal from the meeting. If I can just ask the committee to note the confirmed appointment to the position of Chair Councillor Robert Chapman for the municipal year 2020 to 2023, as agreed by four councils at its annual meeting on the 25th of May. Do, do we know that, please? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It's great to see you all again. Um, okay, so I have no further announcements. If you could note the circulated terms of reference to the committee for the municipal year, please. No, 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 no. Are there any apologies for absence? Don't think so. No, no. Um, there are no items of urgent business I've been notified of. Of are there any uh, interest that members need to declare, please? No. Um, we, yeah. Okay. So if we go to the unrestricted minutes, so obviously don't matter. Can we uh, agree the unrestricted meeting minutes of the meeting on the 11th of April 22? Okay. Yes, Chair. Right. If I'm, if, if you indulge me, uh, I'm going to move to item 10 first, as uh, Councillor Williams is here and uh, may wish to speak on the, on the report. Is, um, is that okay? Yes, sir. No. Nine. 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 Sorry. Thank you very much, Councillor. <laughs> I'm not sure the council wins. We wanted to work with electricity supply contract. But, uh, okay. Right, so item nine. If I can uh, invite Rosina saying this. It's probably surprised because wasn't expecting this yet. Is anyone there at all? Hello. 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 Hi, is that uh, Rosina Hussain? Hi, it's Rosina Hussain. Can you can everybody hear me? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Welcome to the Cabinet Government Sources Committee. Uh, we've moved your report early because Council Williams is here as well. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're ready, I'd like you to introduce it first, please. Sure. I'm Rosina Hussain. I'm Commissioning and Performance Manager in Employment Skills and Adult Learning. My manager, Andrew Monk, is here in the meeting as well. Um, I'd like to introduce the meeting. Um, this report details the outcome of the recent procurement for the adult community learning provision and seeks authority to award a framework of approved adult learning training providers. So this is for us to award a multi-supplier two-year framework agreement with an option for two annual year extensions after to the successful providers listed in exempt appendix one. The framework will provide a wide range of adult learning opportunities across the borough in line with the funding body's guidelines that will support employment skills and adult learning service delivery model for adult learning and skills. It will also support wider council objectives for the reduction of unemployment, reduced poverty and the provision of community engagement activities. The adult learning service has an annual target of 2000 learning places to be provided across an Ofsted, Ofsted inspected curriculum structured program and the services grant funded through the GLA adult education budget. In this report here, there's 36 providers that are 
that applied under the framework, 22 were successful and 14 were unsuccessful. So we've come here to the Cabinet Procurement and Insourcing Committee to approve the award of the contracts to the 22 suppliers listed in exempt Appendix 1 for the supply of adult and community learning provision under a two-year plus one plus one framework agreement from 2022 to 2026. The estimated value of this framework is 500,000 in year one and the following years. This all depends on the allocation based on the service, the performance, location, available budget. And the delegated award of these call of contracts will be done by the strategic director of inclusive economy, regeneration and new homes, Stephen Haynes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Councillor Williams, did you want to add anything? Um, thank you, Chair. The only thing that I really wanted to say was just to underscore the importance and the significance of this piece of work. You'll remember that in 20, September 2020, we integrated adult learning um, with the employment and the skills team. Uh, this year, we also made a commitment to deliver the excellence of uh, adult learning services. Um, for the borough to, to make up for Brexit and changing needs in terms of sexual changes across um, the green economy, for example, as well as um, as well as social care. Um, so this is really significant uh, next stage work for the employment and um, skills and adult learning team. So I'm, I'm really glad that it's come here today. I'm really glad that it's on the public record um, that we are making significant and changes within the service to deliver excellent outcomes for our residents. And that's all I really want to say to, to the paper. Thank you very much for bringing it here tonight. And uh, also uh, my gratitude to the officers who have ensured what, what they're able to now do is free up officer time to, to work on that and deliver that rather than consuming officer time with what has been a yearly um, an ongoing um, change to the adult learning curriculum. Um, it's taken a considerable amount of time and resources, and this will now ensure we can work and um, deliver those excellent services. Thank you very much. Has uh, anyone got any questions or comments? Councillor Kennedy? Um, just like to thank officers for their work, Chair, um, and uh, looking at the list of uh, providers, it's uh, I have every confidence that um, we've got good local providers um, who we know to provide good services um, and delighted to see actually so many local names there, um, some of them towards the top of the list. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Thank you. Uh, can, I, can I ask uh, just a couple of questions? Um, just on sustainability issues, um, uh, we can see from your description, paragraph seven there, you, you're planning great things, but um, um, it talks about KPIs being developed. I just wonder if um, you could say a little bit more about how you're going to do that and achieve those uh, outcomes. If I, while I'm asking that, I'll just point to the table on page um, 75. Uh, where you've got um, a list of wet uh, KPIs. Uh, I had a little bit of trouble understanding some of those. Um, There's particular things where it says uh, major works completed in time 110% and then 105%. So, yeah, uh, in my discussions with the officers earlier, I couldn't really work out what some of those were, so it might be help, helpful with you. If you so, could just give me a, okay. give us, the give the committee so, a, a, a sort of... Check, that's for ethic 10. That's I can tell I'm in the wrong one. Should never. Oh, God. I should, I, I, I should rely on paper for now, aren't I? Yeah. Do it, my, do it, my apologies. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll leave it there. Actually, I think um, that there was. Uh, yeah, uh, the, 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 there's a full explanation in the board on this issue. I do, oh yeah, I know. I want to ask on this one. in sourcing. Um, I, I, I can. I, I see a follow you on. Um, I see the opportunities that that gives us. But I just. Um, 
uh, one comment on perhaps on the possibilities for the source in the future. Um, happy to come in on this if I may, Chair. It's Andrew. Yeah, happy to come yeah, in on this. And I yeah. yeah, thanks. Just ask you. permission to come in. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, boom. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Chapman. So, so, yeah, Andrew, my head of service for employment schools, adult learning. So, we do a mixed economy model. So, we do deliver using both commission providers and um, an in house direct teach service. Um, we're really keen to maintain that model for reasons Councillor Kennedy has flagged in terms of supporting. A significant number of local community-based providers. Um, we also find it we it brings the best out of delivery. Many of those providers know the market, know those communities really well, and perform very highly. Obviously, um, we're aware of the push towards in-source delivery, but we try and get a balance um, between those two models of support the community and in-house delivery today. And it's also worth bearing in mind that the GLA have a very strong focus. Um, on performance um, and we have found that this mixed model is delivering well in terms of performance and meeting Ofsted expectations as well. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions or comments? Councillor Lee. Thanks Andrew. In that case if we're, if we're focusing on partnership can um, you advise on how the framework will, I guess, work with those venues where we have pre-pandemic accommodated adult learning. I'm thinking of our children's centres, whether whether we'll see them returning, um, or whether this is a case by case question that you'll be unpacking, or whether that's already kind of in hand. Yeah, thanks for that question, Councillor Willie. So um, in line with the inclusive economy strategy, which the council adopted, we very much try to take an asset-based approach. So thinking about where we've got council assets, such as children's centres, such as libraries, such as community halls, um, to best reach our communities. And we are, um, to, to best reach our learners, and we are next year looking to deliver out of all those venues. So we've just run a very successful um, festival of learning in partnership with libraries. We will continue to deliver, particularly East Seoul, community and family learning from children's centres. And Councillor Williams just mentioned the um, successful integration with employment skills. We will be using our three employment hubs to deliver adult learning courses um, as well. And we're always looking to kind of develop, further develop that model, but with a focus on council owned assets. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Woodley. Yep, thank you. Okay, if um, so, no other questions or comments, if we can, um, Move the recommendations in section three of the reports, and are we happy to agree with that set out there? Agree. Thank you very much, and thank you very much to the officers presenting, and um, welcome and thank you to Council for attending the meeting. Thank you. Right, now we we'll stop my fixation on item 10 and go, <laughs> and go yeah. back to item uh, seven. Okay, so if I could ask uh, Tony Connolly, is it, to uh, introduce the report. Good afternoon, my name is Tony Connell, I'm the short break manager. Hello? Hello? Uh, Sorry, it's a bad connection. Good afternoon, my name is Tony Connell. Okay. I'm the short break manager for Hackney and today I'm asking so, no. for approval for the Support for the children with the disabled children's services um, outreach and domiciliary care contract. This is to provide support to the most vulnerable children within Hackney who all have a disability of some form and following an assessment by a member of the social work team, an organisation will be allocated to support that child or young person. We had responses from 36 providers. We have allocated 33 to the framework through four lots. Lot A, lot 1A is for group activities, lot 1B is for outreach support, lot C was for domiciliary care, and lot D is for overnight support. Uh, the contract will run up for four years and will bring it into line with the current short break contract. So when this kind of contract expires, we will then run it 
in a conjunction with a short break contract, bringing both contracts under one banner rather than having two separate contracts. Thank you. Is he, is he stopped? Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so, is the, I don't. Is it, are there any comments or questions from members, uh, Councillor Woodley? Especially that. Yeah, just just a comment, really. Just the the importance of having this kind of. Oh, sorry, is my is it on? Yeah. Just the importance of having this kind of range of offers for our short break service and and the work that's been done to sort of make sure that this is the appropriate um, offer that we want to make to our sort of children, and young people. So I hope you will support this proposal. Any other questions or comments? Uh, uh, only to only to just to echo that, Chair, knowing how vital the service is to uh, many of the families that myself and Councillor Woodley, and indeed I'm sure Councillor Kennedy to some extent talked to, and just that opportunity to have that respite and moment just to reflect or take rest and re-engage with those family opportunities is in, is integral to um, family life when you're dealing with um, children and young people that need support. So just want to welcome this piece of work and thank officers and members alike. Thank you, Councillor Woodley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's okay. Then. Yeah, Chair. Councillor Kennedy, yeah. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I absolutely did want to come in because uh, I was pleased to see that the report talked about the um, the very obvious overlap between um, adult services as well, because all our disabled children become adults. Um, I was slightly disappointed that the report at 5.1.4 said that actually the attempts to jointly commission with adults hadn't worked because obviously very many of the children who are receiving these services will go straight into receiving the adult services and one of the things we know that causes stress in lives is the transition point um, and I would have hoped that um, it would have been possible for at least part of the contract to have jointly um, tendered with the adult services so I wanted some uh, assurance that we would keep investigating that please um, and I'd also at uh, 5.2.1 at uh, the end of the section option four on direct payments um, while I understand the reasoning for it not currently being a viable option um, to try and move everyone to direct payments because that simply doesn't work for some people I do want us to continue to try and ensure that we increase the number of people using direct payments to access these serv services because we do as an organization believe and we know it's best for people when they these services are as personalized as possible and direct payments allows you to do that thank you chair thank you uh, does the officers want any officers want to come back on that, that comment from council Kennedy just um, reassure us Yes, if I may, under the first question with relation to adult services, we do work very, very closely with adult services. I know in terms of the disabled children's team and the adult team, the social work managers or service managers do speak a lot about transferring cases and transferring support across. The only reason we set this up as a standalone service is because it was becoming very, very confused with children's services and adult services and where the services were being delivered. The adult home care contract is very, very complex, um, where we're looking at regions within Hackney, within ethnic, eth, sorry, ethnic, sorry, delivery for ethnic backgrounds, excuse my bad grammar, um, whereas with children's services, the co cohort is so much smaller, we support about 350 children. It's a very small, specialised cohort, and what we wanted the services that could be delivered specifically for those children make sure they were being supported with the correct level of support and the transition to adult would work through a, a, a social work and disabled children team to work on a transition plan to ensure that they move across to adult. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. And with relation to or with regard to direct payments, we do have a number of families yeah. that use direct payments, but there are 
there is an awful lot of fear around direct payment. When you, I speak to parents, um, they look at the paperwork that's involved and realise that they are responsible for many thousands of pounds, and it terrifies them. I try to explain it's not as scary as it looks. It is just numbers. It is a process we have to follow that they need to follow step by step. And once they actually start using direct payment, it is actually a relatively simple process. But because they're dealing with money that is allocated by the council, it does tend to scare them because they're worried that if they make a mistake, we will come after them like Big Brother. And I, you know, I try to make it clear that this is a service that's there to support their their son, their daughter, to ensure that they have quality and the best support in life. We do move towards direct payment, but again, there are cost elements involved in setting it up, ensuring that parents are happy and comfortable. And it's something we can look at maybe over a four or five year plan to move more and more towards direct payment. But there are there is resistance from certain parents and there is an awful lot of fear and we need to overcome the fear. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. If I could ask a couple of points, actually. Um, just on the, the, the sort of contract um, management and the KPI side, um, I, I can see there's an explanation about how you're going to approach this. Um, but, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not completely clear uh, uh, the detail of, of that, I think, from the section you put down there. Um, and I'm assuming from the way the KPI table is presented that the, these are in development rather than fully developed. So that's right. I just uh, if you could um, uh, just say a little bit more about how how a contract to be managed and um, you know how you're about to work out whether a particular supplier, since especially you've got quite a lot of them, I know that's got over the four four areas. How how you measure success or um, lack of success in any particular relationship? Well, the contract sorry. management will be covered by myself. Right, sorry. Um, yeah, so the whole question or just the last comment? No, the, 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 the line the, the comment, I'm sorry, I do apologise. The um, just a very bad line, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a very bad line. Can you hear me now? No. Yes, sir. Anyone there? Yeah, just it's about contract management arrangements. So just I want you to set out the, the sort of um, basics of it in the report. I just given you've got a lot of contractors there and um you know, give us a, say a little bit more about how that will work in, de in detail. The contract management will be carried out by myself well, and the board. Well, by the KPIs, you say my areas are managing, but you haven't said what the KPIs are, for instance. Yeah, I, heard about that. I heard something about KPIs and it went fuzzy. I mean, the KPIs we set up are based on each child is unique and individual. So this will be something we will discuss with social workers in advance because the social worker will carry out an assessment of a child or a young person. They will look at the needs of the child. Say, for example, um, a young person who has issues with their behavior at home, how they react to their parents, how they react to instructions or uh, to do things within a certain timetable, they will be put together as part of the presentation that they will make to the Disabled Children's Resource Panel. And they will discuss how we can try and meet that young person's needs, how we can reduce, reduce stress in the family, how we can make the young person a happier person in terms of how they're delivering the service. This will be communicated to the provider. And when the provider is putting together their plan, myself and the brokerage officer will speak to them about what they what we expect. And we'll, we'll start with the basics of a, you know, the services to be delivered for so many hours per day per week. And what we would like the workers to do, if there's a specific thing we'd like to work on, they're moving towards independence or travel training or ensuring they're safe outside. And then when the, the case is reviewed in a year's time or earlier, if that's decided by the head of service, it will be part of the KPI that we allocated, I don't know, ABC agency, and their their target for that individual child was to make sure that their behaviour was 
walk that was calm in the home, they were a happier person for whatever reason, and the support was actually doing something meaningful rather than going in there and being an overpriced babysitting person. So they could help the young person dress in the morning, take care of their personal care, go downstairs for breakfast and sit at the family table rather than being a disruptive influence and causing a great deal of stress at the start of school or the end of the school day or during the weekend or school holiday. That's how we look at the KPIs and it will be based on each individual fact. I'm sorry, my voice is starting to go a bit, so I do apologise if I'm not yep. too clear. No, no, thank you, that's helpful. Um, I, I took the, the summary of that basically and very much on a case-by-case -case basis, yeah. which I think, you know, in a sense, it's what because of the small yeah. number of children and vast range of um, vast interests range. and, and yeah. mm. needs. Just yeah. to learn the vast range. Okay, um, since we're now called the Cabinet Procurement and Insourcing Committee and we have uh, a new, uh, 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 refreshed uh, emphasis on our sourcing, say, I, I'm going to ask you about uh, what's your view on potentially sourcing in the future. I mean, I read the report and I see you know, your arguments for now and I think the fact that no one's asked about it means the committee understands that, but did you think uh, how how will the service look at potentiality of insourcing some of this stuff, some of this provision in the future, if that's at all feasible? It, it's something we will look at. I mean, in, in terms of certain lots such as lot four for overnight support, that's very unlikely because we would need a large building. So that's something we may not insource. But looking specifically at domiciliary care, we could look towards insourcing that. But the number of children we're trying to, try to support and the volume of hours that we have to deliver would be quite significant. It would be something that I would look at, but in, time, in terms of getting this project put together, excuse me. In terms of getting this project put together, we didn't have the time. I'd rather do a proper report rather than rushing something through. The issue that will always be there is that there is a huge uh, problem in recruiting care staff at the moment. There is a severe lack of care staff across the UK, so it's something we could look at doing, but I, you know, it's looking at the cost, how long it's going to take, the value against insourcing, against outsourcing, outsourcing and the long-term viability. As say, it's something we can put together as a plan and look forward in the long term. I mean, the model I had in mind was the Hackney Transport Service, where we have a number of Hackney vehicles that take children from point A to point B, and where the vehicles don't work, we will look at using a private company. So we could be, run a similar type of service where the domiciliary care service could be taken care of by a Hackney insourcing operation, and the residential, or sorry, the um, social activity service could be commissioned by providers, or possibly moved towards the direct payment. Okay, thank you. That, that was helpful. Um, but yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting in years to come to see uh, how we might manage to develop some of those ideas. But that, that's that's helpful. Okay. No other comments or questions. If I can ask members if they're happy to agree, the recommendations are set out in section three. Agree. Agree. Thank you, and thank you very much for coming and presenting the report to us as well. Thank you. That's helpful. So if we now move to item eight. Um, Britannia sales report, and I think it's uh, Hayley Miller and Justin Felton going to introduce the report. So, Hayley or Justin, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll um, talk to the report. Um, Justin is also here and can can help with any questions. Um, so, uh, members will be aware, I'm sure, of the Britannia um, project. But uh, last update to Cabinet in March uh, recommended uh, that we commence the procurement stage. Um, for, um, for 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 our phase two um, part of the pro of the project, so we have um, the, the the new school open, we have the new leisure centre open, and the focus now turns to phase two, which is the residential element, uh, the delivery of eighty one affordable homes as part of that first phase, um, and uh, the the private for sale homes, some three hundred and fourteen private for sale homes that need to be delivered in order to um, uh, make the business case work. Uh, so they are the cross subsidy that enables that upfront uh, capital expenditure that, that has happened already on phase one and also uh, to, to help subsidise with the affordable housing. 
This report that we brought uh, is, a, is a contract uh, recommendation for our sales agent. We've had a sales agent uh, in terms of a development advisor uh, as part of the project team since 2017 when the, when the project team came together. It's now appropriate that we uh, re-procured that for the delivery phase. The actual requirement is in three phases. So the first phase being a strategy phase where we will review uh, the, the sales and marketing strategy uh, and get that um, approved. We'll then move into a pre-sales phase where we will look to implement that strategy uh, prior to, to launching our sales. And then we move into the sales phase itself where we would have launched uh, the sales for the, for, for the um, uh, Britannia project. It is, uh, to be absolutely clear, this sales agent is for the private sales only, not for the shared ownership sales. They will be um, uh, managed and, and um, marketed by Hackney Sales as per normal. This is purely for the 314 um, private for sale units. Um, the, in looking at the, the, the procurement route for that, uh, we did, uh, at the beginning of the project, look at an in-source route and whether or not Hackney Sales had uh, the, the the skills and expertise to do this and at that point it was concluded uh, that it was um, out with um, their skill set and certainly risk profile um, particularly in relation to uh, the need for an international marketing strategy as part of uh, the sales approach um, as well as a domestic strategy um, and so the route um, for, for, for our sales agent has been to, to, to go out via framework um, this is relatively um, sort of typical um, uh, services from a sales agent perspective uh, and the, the, the framework that we've used is the Notting Hill Genesis uh, estate agents framework of which there are 10 suppliers uh, that have uh, the requisite experience of private sales um, and um, we had a response to our procurement for that from six of those 10 suppliers um, and uh, obviously we're recommending uh, the, the, the top supplier in supplier E in this report um, in terms of how the actual um, engagement is structured, I've, I've talked about that from a phases point of view. Clearly, um, most of the, the fee from this comes from commission, as you would if you were selling any property. And so, uh, in fact, there are no upfront costs uh, until we sell any of the property. So it was important when we went through this procurement that uh, the bidders confirmed that they would not um, um, uh, come um, for any costs if uh, the council was in any uh, for any reason not to proceed to the sales phase of this strategy. Uh, so we still have to go through um, the, the cabinet approval um, to enter the construction phase and to enter the sales phase uh, and that is built into this procurement. So the actual procurement timeline or the actual engagement timeline is from, from now from the strategy phase until the sale of the last property which at the moment is estimated to be around March 2027, subject to those gateways that I've talked about. Um, the, the actual fees that have come in are, are, are set out in, in, in the exempt appendices, um, but the bidder that we were recommending, bidder E, um, was joint top in terms of the quality scores and was second um, uh, in terms of the cost score. So uh, a very strong all-rounder, um, and, and there is no reason why we should, we should not go forward to a point in addition, um, from a sustainable procurement perspective, um, um, all, all the bidders um, answered in each of the three areas uh, and the, the recommended bidder um, was particularly strong in setting out how they would work um, given their local uh, presence and, and local passion for Hackney to, to, to deliver outcomes back in, in the three areas in particular, um, as well as, as, as working up a social value plan, which we will do with them on appointment. Um, in, in line with the, 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 the categories and, and the areas that we set out in the report. Uh, they also explicitly um, committed to give a percentage of their fee um, to charity um, as and when obviously that commission that comes through throughout the engagement. So that was a very tangible and real commitment um, that, that, that we will work with them to, to best utilise for the, for, for the local community. Um, and I think that's all I want to say at the moment. I'm happy to take questions. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, you actually answered my only question in your presentation. Which was really helpful. <laughs> so any, any, uh, I've got a, one comment at the end, but um, Councillor Kennedy. Um, uh, thank you, Hayley. Um, I just wanted to. Uh, uh, 
is two things. The first one, I don't fully understand the difference uh, between option two and option three on, on page 37, where you chose to procure via a framework rather than by an open process. I mean, is it possible that many of the firms that tendered might have been on both, is my sort of question. Uh, and I don't fully understand the difference. And then my second one is just a, a point about the uh, the notional um, split 50-50 between international sales and domestic sales, um, which just strikes me as a shame. But I, sure, I, I I'm fully prepared to be told there isn't anything we can do about that. If that's your, so, so on the first point, and um, just to be to be clear, so that the business case that was taken to to the procurement board considered the uh, use of frameworks, and there were a number of frameworks we considered, um, and also considered going out to um, a find a tender service, normal um, procurement as as would have been uh, with a no due procurement. The difference being um, that uh, the, the 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 timeline to procure uh, is it was deemed to be more more efficient in the framework that was already up and running. The services which are being procured are very known services, and so to that extent, there were there was there, there were um, uh, frameworks out there that offered us an expedient route to 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 reach the the the, the, the appropriate um, expertise. Uh, and I think that the, the reason the, the reason being that we, having had six um, tenders back, and of which three were incredibly high scoring, as you can see, uh, I think that the, the framework route has been successful for us in, on this occasion. Uh, in particular, yeah. the expertise in relation to international sales is something which, um, uh, you know, really does fall to, uh, you know, certain players in the market that, that can deal with 314 um, private units, of which the international element is a large, uh, a, a, a large element of. So, so I, I think that the framework gave us that opportunity. It gave us something that we could do quickly. Um, we've got the good interest out of it, and so we didn't need to go through a longer open procurement uh, for, 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 that, um, for that basis. In terms of the second one, the 50% uh, international to domestic was a pure notional split. It was so that we could um, evaluate cost bids on uh, the same basis. We had to make an assumption. Um, the sales strategy we have at the moment doesn't have an assumption for that, and that is part of what we will do in the next phase. Uh, we obviously have had conversations throughout the tender with uh, with bidders as to what that might look like, um, but but yes, that was a purely for financial cost comparison basis, and the sales strategy over the next two or three months will will come back with what we think, given the market at the moment, uh, that will be. It is likely, uh, as as you, uh, I'm, I'm sure would hope, it's likely that that will be a higher percentage in domestic. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, if I could just comment that um, we noticed, I noticed that the sustainable procurement section of the report that they, they were very full and set out you know, exactly what you were doing. And just wanted to uh, thank you for doing that and point uh, perhaps some some of our other gas co colleagues towards that. But thank you. Um, and uh, thank you for presenting the report. So, if you notice the recommendations set out in paragraph three. Are we happy? Is it to agree those? Agreed. Agreed. Okay, well, one approved, one no. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Um, okay, so thank you all very much. So um, we've now get to the point that I've been rushing towards all night, five and ten. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, let's just buy contract. And I think Robert Matheson is going to introduce this, please. Yes, well, indeed. So, um, good, good evening, all. Um, so, in terms of the um, request, it's a request for uh, approval uh, for like communal electrical uh, contracts to award the contract. Um, the communal electricals uh, relates to um, the incoming supplies uh, on our uh, mainly on our estates, but also on some of the individual street properties. Um, it is uh, primarily outside the. Uh, demise of individual uh, residents, so it's it's the main uh, lack of supplies. Um, we've gone through a, uh, a, a, a the strategy has been to um, go out um, to to the market on this, um, having considered um, the options of in, in sourcing um, it, but it was felt that actually 
um, at the moment the um, skill base and the ability to uh, build the skill base within the um, DLO um, would take uh, sort of too much time to, to, to build up and, and bearing in mind the specific um, skills that would be required for this uh, would would prove difficult but I think it's it's something that uh, uh, I know we would be continuing to uh, review um, in, in due course um, the um, other option was to consider um, having it in part of a wider planned and cyclical works contract um, but it the uh, and 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 run it uh, run any works on that but um, on balance it was felt that actually the benefit of going specific to electrical contractors would uh, remove some of the uh, cost that a main contractor would uh, uh, add to um, the existing the, the tenders as well as um, being able to work directly with um, the electrical specialist contractors um, so the uh, approach was decided that actually you would we'd go for a specific uh, contract on that so the um, rec recommendations is to uh, award uh, the contract to um, the contractor the highest uh, con uh, scoring contractor um, in the exempt uh, named in the exempt appendix a um, that is for initially for a term of five years uh, with an ability to extend up to a further uh, five years. Um, that's probably, and um, we've set out um, um, the sort of KPIs within the, um, the report, um, and those include um, the not a, uh, they include the sort of main things to make as tools to manage the contract and they also include um around the social value so um the social in terms of the social value um we um have worked obviously with the uh, sort of appoint, hackney's appointed provider uh, in terms of the bid and within um appendix of exempt appendix um b we've set out um the um contractors the um contractor that's the, the best scoring contractors uh commitment um in terms of um social value so that uh, set set out there um in terms and that's based on um the full the full value of the con contract and my understanding is that sort of if we were we to um allocate a lesser amount of value to the contract um, obviously, those those um, those offers would be would be prorated accordingly, and we will continue. We will obviously um, uh, manage that through through the contract itself. I think that's uh, the sort of quick uh, synopsis of the proposals. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there any questions or comments? Um, you have one. I have one. Have one. Have I ask somebody at the beginning of the meeting, sorry. Um, yeah, I'll try and do this without referring to the, uh, the exempt appendix because uh, another repetition. I, when we're look, looking at the table, particularly the, um, the, the section on contract management arrangements, particularly the table, uh, page 75, slipping over to page 76, we have trouble understanding some of the aspects of that. For instance, major works completed in time was 110% and then 105% and couldn't really work out what that meant, you know, how it could be more than 100%. And yes, yeah, so, yeah, so just, just think it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't crystal clear in every case what you meant by those KPIs. I don't know if okay. my colleagues are it's more obvious to you. Okay, well, I'll, I'll do my uh, best to explain those. Obviously, um, there's a within the contract it's each one has its own individual pay, uh, um, paper in terms of the exact way that the, the calculation is done and i sort of felt uh, not particularly so appropriate to um, include it although maybe in hindsight i could have included it as a further appendix a non-exempt appendix um, but to um, e explain why in, ca in occasions we have uh, more than a hundred percent is because on the uh, cost cost um, the the 
the uh, project predictability and in fact the cost predictability um, the um, target is obviously to supposing i'll give an example supposing we are to looking to complete a contract within 20 weeks um, if it if it runs to 20 weeks that's that's achieved the the sort of 100 percent it's arrived on time if it goes over uh, by two weeks it's 10 percent over uh, and thus comes in the way the calculation set out to 110 percent um, so um, the uh, target is to keep it within within either the 105 or the 100, 100 110 um, in the first year and then and then obviously reduce it so effectively on if we look at kpi3 which is the time uh, and the major works completed within time uh, the 110 effectively calculates as it's kept it's within 10 percent of its it, the agreed um, time scale for that project and then moving down to 105 would mean that it was five percent so obviously in the case of a 20-week contract in the first one um, to hit the target it would have to be uh, less than 20 uh, 22 weeks or a, a further period uh, two week beyond the original contract and then um, in subsequent the years years three and beyond it would have to be within one one week thus being five percent sort of five percent on our uh, nominal example of 20 weeks so I hopefully that makes it a little clearer I, I, yeah I, I regret I'm still a bit puzzled can I just ask so using that as an example of that game just say 110 percent of what 110 that, that line through yeah so 110 percent of the original contract period so if the contract the or the for the particular task so we're, we're carrying out um works to for argument's sake a, a couple of four say four blocks and the uh, agreed contract period or to, to carry out the tasks is 20 weeks um if if it's completed within 20 weeks it's completed on uh, on uh, sort of 100 percent um uh, it completes on, on time if it completes uh, 110 gotcha. it means it's, gotcha. it's run over by 10 percent thus sort of two weeks in that hypothetical uh, question so um, um example sorry um chair um, and and so a, a lower percentage means that it's it's um it's it's a shorter period of time and it's probably just the way that the maths is done and, and maybe i agree um gotcha. the, and, and ex the full example um in the appendix in future might be more helpful for uh, members in a uh, in an appendix and happy happy to to to, to transpose those across because it shows the calculation with examples okay okay thank you very much i think i think i'm a bit a bit clearer now as um uh and, and i suppose as long as it's crystal clear to the people who are technically evaluating the performance of this contract um we'll be satisfied but um, anyway, anyone else got any questions or comments on this report can we um then move to the recommendations and agree paragraph three and agreeing the recommendations agree thank you very much so i think there's no need to have gone to any of the um exempt items we have no other business so um, thank you all very, very much for attending both um, members and officers thank you thanks thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah.